that little sentence and you get one minute. I'm going to stop you in one minute. 60 seconds, go. Okay. You just let that sit. Um, let's go back on the porch. Let's turn backwards to the learning environment. All right? And this, this is the same thing no matter what your job, what kind of learning environment are you creating, including if you're a manager and you have staff and so on. If, you know, if people don't feel themselves inside of a, an environment and not, they don't feel learning, and you're at an educational institution, there's some, there's some sort of bitter irony on it. <laughs> Happens all the time. We're under so much pressure. We're so damn passive aggressive in these institutions. All right? And that's, that always feels bad. You have friends who are passive aggressive. Maybe you are. Okay, this is a learning environment. Um, porch talk, and it goes on to the next page. There's one sentence, but go ahead. Someone, uh, someone new, read this real loud. Yeah. Classroom environment should be open, respectful, playful. There should be argument, dissection, and revision. It should be personal, political, and philosophical. It can sometimes be candid, even a little painful. Porch talk about humor, noise, and movies. A classroom with such honesty and visibility can produce frustration and also acceptance. Needless to say, trust is at the foundation of a porch talk classroom, and trust has to be earned, modeled, practiced, and openly reflected upon and revisited. Porch talk is intentional, for example. The instructor looks for an opportunity to draw out, celebrate, and dignify the quieter students. So all the voices in the room make up the porch. All this inside the classroom where you bring lessons, course objectives, time pressures, individual challenges, content, and coverage. Okay. So I want you, this time I don't want you to talk, you feel that. I want you to apply this to your own job, whatever your job you have. Where's your porch? What porch do you create? Um, so just sit for three minutes, just, just picture yourself in your job, take some of this verbiage, and what aspects of the porch, or, or, or do you want to? Maybe you don't right now, maybe you haven't used this language, but maybe it's something you, right? So go ahead and apply it to yourself for a second. We're zeroing in on giving you about 10 minutes to write your queen or seven minutes. Not very long. Hopefully this is not too loud. Sorry, I'm, I'm a little bit running you through. Um, I'm covering. Okay, we're on. You should definitely start to do to apply this to yourself. We're on. We're on the last one that I want to look at, and then turn you turn it over completely to you guys for the rest. Um, we have about twenty-ish minutes. Um, this is from a talk from Jane. If I were your teacher, it's on page two. And I'll tell you what. By the way, I'll tell you what the last thing is, so we're not going to read it. Towards an affective pedagogy. Turn turn to page five. Four or five. That's an article on on um, the affective pedagogy. It's 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 starting. I've I've been writing it for a long. I actually have been writing. It's not even an article. It's a piece of a book. I've been interviewing teachers and educators all over the place about the affective domain. Um, this is a little piece out of it um, towards towards us starting to think of. Um, you, uh, really leveraging that affective domain intentionally and ped having pedag literally pedagogical strategies around it because we don't speak enough, we don't speak clearly enough and strategically enough in that, in that domain. It's, it's a sort of by the way thing or it's in my class I do. But we don't actually theoretically and analytically look at it, train on it, um, discuss it in our hallways intentionally and there's nothing wrong with being intentional about the affective domain. It's not disingenuous. Um, you're a teacher. Everything you do is rhetorical. If, learn, if you bring about learning, right, you're doing your job. At some level, that's what you, that's, that's your, that's it. Okay. Back to the James Baldwin. Okay. So this is from a speech from James Baldwin. and It was actually in 1963. I got the date wrong. This is on, um, on uh, if you want to hear the whole thing, it's a half hour long. It, it's a great thing to share with your students. Um, it's on iTunes. If you go to podcasts on iTunes, it's Baldwin 146. You can't miss it. It's BMA, it's called BMA. I think it's Black Media Archives. Um, great, by the way, if you're interested in Black Media Archives. 
It's an incredible source. Incredible source. Unbelievable how much they have in there. It's fantastic. Where's Baldwin 1? Baldwin. Baldwin 146. They number it. Yeah, they number all their little things. And it's free. All right, I'm going to read the first one, then I'm going to play the second two. Then we're going to send you off, off to the queening. If I were your teacher, and I knew that you were beginning to wonder, he's, so he's talking to these Oakland High School students, almost all of them are African Americans, 1963. Um, it's in a, um, an economically uh, poor uh, part of Oakland, the, the high school. The dropout rate at this school right now is, is over half. Um, Right, 45% 40, of the teenagers in Oakland drop out, do not complete um, their education. And I don't know what it was in 63, I've never done that research. So he's talking to him. this is about in the 10th minute. If I were your teacher and I knew that you were begin beginning to wonder about what you were doing in school in the first place and what waited for you outside, what good was it for you to be here since nothing that happened here prepared you for outside? Knowing your bitterness and not trying to pretend for a moment that is not justified, I'd yet have to suggest to you that the problems that you face, ha you have to make them personal. And the reason I wanted to read this is, I won't get to it, but this is one of my uh, thesis for equity. Equity is political. It is, uh, it, it, it is related to groups, you know, recently um, dislocated workers, vets, um, certain groups of students, African Americans, Hispanic, equity is that all, we want all of our students from all of our groups to achieve. Um, but equity ultimately, as it's practiced, is personal. It's human. As it's thought about in the institution and analyzed, it can be broader, where you can talk about groups. But as it's experienced and, and put into practice, it's, it's, one, it's a very, very personal thing to practice equity, right? It's you invested in, in another human, human being very intently and intensely. Does that make sense? That's the argument. Because that's, that's, that's where we get confused. Blah, 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 help black students? No, Cedric wants help. Cedric wants to be successful himself. Cedric has a life. He's got a family. He's got a heart. He's got fears. He's got all that. You know that. So ultimately, the practice of equity is extremely personal. All right, here's Baldwin. I don't know if this will work because I have it plugged into my iPhone. Oops. I have to turn up my phone, I think. Finally, if I were your teacher, here we go. I would beg you to insist to fight with me and not let me get away with anything. No matter how I may sound, I am really only mortal. And though I love you very much and feel responsible for you, I'm not always right. We depend on each other, the old and the young, to learn from each other. I would beg you to ask me why, for example, your history books are the way they are. And I would beg you to force me to answer if you asked me what relevance your education had for concrete problems such as getting an apartment, moving from one, town, one part of town to another. I would, if I were you, I would force me, I would put me on the spot, ask me the most difficult questions that you can. And I will not be able to answer them. But my responsibility is to hear them. And when you, Ask your question, any question. You begin to know more about what you really think. That's all I have to say. Now you're going to ask me questions. 
Okay. All right. So we have about eight minutes. Why don't you guys try to pull together a queen? Usually I would give you two days, and then the next class period you'd have to, to do it. But let's see who can, who can try it. It's your, it's your, or we could also accept it as your Pee Wee's challenge. You'll have it by tomorrow, and when we see each other, we'll share our queens. But let's see what we got in the next, we'll give ourselves three or four minutes. It's critically important to pull your thoughts together. It's critically important. Um, let's, um, let's see each other tomorrow. Um, and, it, and I'd be thrilled if you came back or shared with me on an email or something like that, your queen. Um, and of course, you don't have to be just use the language there. You can add to it your own flavor, your own spices, things we didn't even ever see coming. That's the beauty of doing it, right? So if you can come up with a queen, it could be one or two sentences. Um, that states your sort of educational position or philosophy, that would be super cool. Um, if you want, I have movies up here of some of the student movies we've made. I have other uh, materials on the Acceleration and Context Initiative where we're working with teachers in this kind of way. If anybody wants any of that or wants to call me or, work or send emails about where's that Baldwin thing, I can't find it or anything like that, feel free. We're pretty open and horizontal. I mean, for this organization, Umoja, my cell phone is the statewide or, uh, cell number. It's ridiculous. No, I could give you my email real quick. I don't have a card. So my email is tdewit, D-E-W-I-T, at Chabot College, C-H-A-B-O-T, college.edu. So my last name has one T, tdewit at chabotcollege.edu. And we're happy to work with folks. I'm not trying to drum up business, but I know I've been around the nation, and I know how it is. And we're absolutely happy to come in schools and work with teachers in particular, or anybody for that matter. Okay, thank you, everybody.